I think we are on. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Let me see here. Let me try to get this blown up. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, today I'm going to give a little bit of marriage advice. And, um, because, well, quite frankly, there's some of y'all that need it out there in a big way. So I'll make sure and give it to you guys the way that I feel like, um, this common sense advice that's helped, uh, me and my marriage and, um, my wife for 31 years. And, you know, you can take it or leave it. But if you're struggling, uh, you know, maybe some things that I say today may help. So, uh, hey, Gene, happy Sunday to you. Except for five. Hey, Brandy and Scarlett. All right. So, first of all, where are you watching me from? I'm looking at the... So I should probably put this a little bit higher. Hey, wait. Scout. Um, all right, I'm looking. Thanks, Michael. All right, we got Florida, Oregon. Marietta, California, New Hampshire, Mandeville, Louisiana, Southern Cal. Uh, my friends from Iraq, all over California, New York, Allen. All right, Elizabeth, good morning to you. Uh, we got Kentucky, nice honeycut. West Virginia, Fulton, California. All right. Miss Sherry from Virginia. How are you and your family? All right, John. Semper Fi. Hey, Todd. Pastor Todd down in Texas. Uh, and Ethan. Okay. Yeah, sorry to hear about that. Nathan, not married anymore after abandonment. Seven years on my own. Hey, Ashley. So, listen. Marriage, what a hard institution. Not easy. It's a, it is a difficult uh, endeavor, to say the least, under the best circumstances. So let, let, me, let me start by saying this. Uh, married 31 years, but separated twice. And I think, um, I, I think that might open up a couple more of your ears to some of the uh, insight that I'll give, you know, I think one thing for sure is expect hardships in your marriage. There, there's no way around it. Uh, if for no other reason, it's Satan who hates marriage. I mean, he absolutely, the devil hates marriage because it's God's institution. I think there's a sacredness to it. Um, and he'll come after you hard. Um, that's his job. So, uh, so first I'd say that. Okay. Now I'm going to talk more about marriage, but I want to let you guys know some good news. Just kind of give you some updates. Uh, we as a ministry are doing very well. Uh, and we're so thankful to people responding, uh, with your prayers and support. So doing this virus outbreak and all, um, you know, most ministries donations are dipping, um, because, you know, just, it is what it is. Uh, we're, we're very humbled that ours as a ministry has not dipped, but actually gone up. Thank y'all. Um, that only tells us that God's wanting to do something and, uh, it's responsibility so one of the things that we've said and mentioned, but not getting a lot of details, so I'll give you a little bit, is uh, the fact that we are 
starting probably this summer, uh, uh, what we're calling the Leadership Training Center, the Victor Marks Leadership Training Center here in Colorado Springs. We have five acres, we have a team house, uh, we're building out um, a training center, an outdoor pavilion shoot house. Uh, we have a shooting range. Uh, we've got a little dojo. Uh, we will be doing three aspects of training depending on what course or what group you come in with. We'll be training and equipping and encouraging everyone from, let's just start with church security staffs. We're really going to focus on helping churches and worship centers around our nation get very squared away uh, with leadership training, crisis management, um, a certification for, uh, you know, actual being a church security person so that it's standardized across the nation. And we've got some of the best advisory board members and instructors. I mean, it's truly humbling when you see what God is doing. So uh, we will be using both the latest technology uh, in the gaming industry to develop uh, crisis uh, mitigation and actuaries uh, through putting in people's churches, uh, through a CAD system, making it the actual virtual reality game that you're playing in so that you can, you and your team can figure out uh, scenarios and train and train and train. And then the other thing will be uh, a company we've partnered with, LaserShot. And um, uh, those are, you know, high def, real situational scenarios where uh, the person trained actually holds either a Glock or a little M4 and whatever we're trying to it um, and learn how to uh, make the right decisions for masculating force to these a deadly force and, and then we'll be teaching surveillance, uh, counter surveillance. Now we'll be teaching and working with families, uh, husbands, wives, husband and wives. Our motto is to fight back to back, not nose to nose. And, um, and that's that's pretty darn fun. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we're, we're looking forward to that, uh, equipping both physical skills, because many of you actually have great uh, a will to do what's right, but you don't have um, what I would call, uh, uh, how, how do I say this? You, you, you don't necessarily have the, um, Skill sets, get the will, but not the skill. So, uh, so uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Hey, Ron Purnell, uh, of course we'll get you out of here. Uh, which brings me to the next deal. We're teaching hand in hand, uh, self defense, um, men. Uh, There's going to be multiple courses. So anyway, that's just a, a peek at what we're doing out here, and we appreciate your support and your love and your prayers, you guys. Um, because we just feel called to help people be equipped physically, uh, stronger emotionally, and then spiritually. Uh, so that's that. All right, so marriage advice. Well, we go back to the fact that one, you gotta know marriage is hard. It is a difficult institution, but one ordained by God, and there's a sacredness to it, um, and don't enter it lightly. I've heard it said that you should enter Marriage with both wide open, both eyes wide open, and then keep them half shut once you're married. Uh, and you know what? It's two imperfect people coming together uh, and learning to be one, and learning to compromise. It is it is all about compromise and forgiveness, and then encouragement. You know, uh, by nature we're just selfish people. If if most are honest, it is about us. If there's a selfishness that's with our fallen nature. So I would say for sure that is an opportunity for us to be able to learn how to die to self, allow God's spirit to flow through us and to love somebody when at times we feel like they shouldn't be loved and at times we feel like we shouldn't be loved, we'll be the recipient of good as well. Uh, so so, you know, so one, knowing that it's hard to be self-aware, 
be honest with yourself of your shortcomings because so often, I mean, so often, you get caught in a groove of just blaming other people. And if you're blaming other people, um, that gets that gets old because uh, you get stuck in a rut. Uh, and it's everybody else's fault or your spouse's fault or whoever. And you need to take responsibility for your own self. That that's that's it's it's a circular loop. It's that that's just deadly. Where ah, uh, and it's just you're focusing on the person, you're focusing on the person. You gotta remember ultimately, uh, I don't think your spouse is the enemy. I think the enemy is the enemy. So uh, be honest about yourself. Own what you do wrong um, and be willing to apologize often and then be willing to change. So here's, here's, here's a really strong point that I want to make to you guys is um, in this time where people being locked in, you know, everything gets a little bit more heightened and aggravating. Uh, so I'll read to you guys, be aware of that, uh, you know, when you just, uh, getting out of joint, but be careful. Don't get wrapped around the axle on something and just hyper focus on it. Uh, cause it will push you to try to get relief in ways you probably shouldn't, which we call coping mechanisms. So let me address drinking. Uh, it's been a theme of mine telling people, Hey, be mindful of your drinking, because for so many of you, it's a coping mechanism uh, that can be negative. It can backfire on you, and that's wrong, uh, and it will make other people uncomfortable. So, you know, here's, here's one thing that me and my wife agreed to. We're not married to anything but each other. So, if I'm doing something that offends my wife or vice versa, we've committed to stop, to not use our liberty, to not justify, well, I'm a, okay, if that really bothers you, if that is unhealthy in our relationship, then I'm a back throttle or, you know, whatever. And um, again, now don't use this, you know, guideline and, rule that we have is, is a means to try to control someone that's stupid too. You just, you just got to say, Hey, let's just say I'm drinking. Cause a lot of, a lot of guys are getting drunk these days, getting all lit and, you know, justifying it. Hey, if it makes your wife uncomfortable, be a damn man and say, Hey, all right, I'm, I'm going to push back on, on the influx of alcohol and, uh, cause it makes you uncomfortable or, our kids or whatever, all right? If you got a problem and you can't, then be a man, go get help. Sign up for a 12-step program. Go to, you know, uh, I mean, there's there's way too many resources and people you can reach out to for help if you're struggling with addictions, whatever they are. Uh, you, you know, I, I had that, that post about pornography the other day and, uh, it was meant to be a joke, kind of get people relief, uh, because there was a wife, you know, who, who doesn't know me or what, wasn't reaching out to me, but it was through a pastor who, you know, found her husband all into porn and stuff, and, and it blew her mind, and, you know, I'm sure it was putting the marriage on the rocks. The pastor was like, hey, well, Victor, you have any recommendations, you know? I said, yeah, uh, get the guy a tube of being gay, and, uh, and when, he, when he feels the urge... Let him a little dab, but do you? And I thought it was just funny. So did the pastor. Uh, and if it ever got back to the guy, probably the guy too. Uh, and his wife probably would have gone on bot. So that was just because I shared it. And I had some of the weirdest people just start belly aching about it. I'm not, I'm not compassionate and sensitive. And, you know, it's such a big struggle. I, of course. That's why I made a joke about it. Are you kidding me? And uh, there was one bonehead just kept ragging on me. I'm like, you, you little keyboard warrior. You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say none of this stuff to my face. Uh, and and typically guys won't. They're pretty big behind the keyboard. Um, I, I had one guy one time threatening to cut my head off. 
uh, he was affiliated with ISIS. 72 hours later, uh, he was caught. It was in another country, but we had our security measures in place, and we were able to track down exactly where he was coming from. Continent, country, city, neighborhood. And when you know it, he was he was posting these threats to me, associated with ISIS, because of what I did um, out of a basement uh, in a counterterrorism unit. I got a actionable packet on him and caught him. So I appreciate people's opinions and normally I let it ride, but that bonehead, I just got tired of it. And, um, you know, what I don't like is men justifying behavior by being victims. I know what it's like to be a victim. I struggled with it most of my life. And I had a lot of background baggage that would put me there. And uh, including having to be on Depakote, Depakine, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium, Bispar. I started drugs in the sixth grade. And at one point I was addicted uh, to Vicodin. I chewed them like M&Ms. And uh, both as a non-believer and a Christian. So I understand. And I understand when you really need counseling and someone to help you. Uh, I have three films on the subject. So... Uh, but I don't like and I don't give quarter to, to men or women who sit in their dirty diaper and just whine and complain about their life and how's this. And well, you, it, how about get a solution? How about take responsibility for yourself and press on and stop giving up? So anyway, if drinking is an issue... And it's causing someone else to be uncomfortable. It becomes a negative coping mechanism or a freedom you don't need to exercise, especially if you're getting drunk. Give me a break. Give me a break. So you want to ruin your marriage pretty fast? Be married to something else in it. Porn, alcohol, your best friends. You know, uh, look, calm down, man. Or ladies. And ladies, don't you get involved with guys on the internet or through this social media. You know, uh, we've seen our, our share of weirdness. I mean, we reached, I think, 51 million people last year, 52. So we, we get our share. And uh, I just say, you know, if the social media causes you to stumble and you're finding old friends and you're trying to get hooked up or you're, you know, Doing stuff you ought not, well, just kill your account, you know. And if a computer causes you to stumble or a cell phone because of porn, well, get your dumb phone. Get away from the smartphones. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I think a lot of justifiable sin in a man's heart or a woman's heart is because of just that. They believe the lies long enough to think it's truth and they can just justify it. But it's wrong and it's sin. You got to repent. If there is no repentance, how can you be forgiven and cleansed and be renewed in God's spirit of what he's offering you to be more than a conqueror? At a certain point, I say, look, let every man be a liar and God the one telling the truth. You know, if I believed, you know, a quarter of the lies that come in this noggin over the years, I wouldn't be married. I'd probably be in prison. I, you know, I would know a lot of worse than only things before I come into contact with the power of God. So the Bible clearly says he's made you more than a conqueror. And the scriptures say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And of course, one of my favorite ones, God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And I take love all day. And I like supernatural power to overcome the enemy and my flesh in this world. And a sound mind. Man, of all people, trust me, I need a sound mind. My biological dad went to a mental hospital for homicidal tendencies. My grandfather died in the same mental hospital, you know, years before my dad or whatever. And, and my other grandfather, bless his heart, called his common law wife cheating and he killed her and then killed himself. So... Look, there, 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 there are plenty of reasons why people live and act dysfunctional, but there's no excuses why. If you name the name of Christ, 
and you have access to the Word of God, that you can't be more than a conqueror. Will you stumble and fall? It says a righteous man will, but he'll get back up. And that's what I'm talking about. Don't stay stuck. Don't get in that loop. So, uh, look, I love you guys. I love y'all enough. Most of you are younger than me. And on the front half of your 18 course golfing and life, and I'm definitely on the back half. And and I'm happy where I'm at. And I've learned from my mistakes. And I try to navigate them so I don't repeat the same ones. And um, and I'm, I'm humbled and honored that God's even given me a platform, the one that I have, to, to reach and encourage so many of you. And, um, and it's all based on the Word of God and the experiences in my life. Not my opinion, it's my experiences of how God has been faithful and how his love has made a difference in my life. And, um, you know, often I hear women say, I love how you love your wife. And I'll tell you, I'll be honest. She's a lippy, heavy drinking, poker playing, smoking, dipping, race track betting. Moonshine making. <laughs> Woman. No, that's a joke. Just if this is your first time following me, you'll hang on. You can put your seatbelt on sometime. I take trails, but I'm going to enjoy life. To the point about my wife and the fact that so many of you appreciate the way I show public affection, love her. I don't even kiss her back on her mouth in front of the camera. I'll put a movie kiss on her. I will. I'll do it. Um, oh, yeah. How about that? Um, but she makes it easy to love her. She does. I don't have any excuse not to love that woman. She's a godly woman who has laid down her life both for the Lord and her husband. And she's not, she ain't a rollover. She ain't no daisy. She's a strong, strong woman. Uh, and yet, you know, she ain't caught up on weirdness in social media. She's not, she doesn't struggle with buying stuff or you know, she's not caught up in weird church group women, ladies who are fighting over a placement set about something that don't matter. As a woman that be by my side in Syria with a solid man 100 yards from us or ISIS at, in shooting distance to do the work of the ministry. That, that's a good one. I'm on, I'm doing a video, honey, but I was just talking nice things about you. Man, why are you going to come in and jam up my session? Hey, testing one, two, three. She's breached the perimeter. My wife, what, honey? Hey. 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 Continue. I'm going to come back in and sit. You're going to come back in and sit and lit. You, yeah. And you know I'm, I was talking about you. Continue. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Start from the beginning. <laughs> Start from the beginning. Once upon a time. On a moonlit night. When I was wearing just the right aftershave. Old Spice. I happened upon a woman. The woman. No, I was just saying, I was just, I was just saying how you make it easy to love you. I'm gonna go give her a kiss, right? No, you do, baby. You, uh, but I know you don't get on camera because uh, she has her teeth out and 
hair extensions gone and um, she hasn't shaved in uh, five days. <laughs> Did you see that? Black belt. See how violent she can get? She's making me flinch. Um, no, so, uh, I just said, you make it easy to love you? But how? Because I'm not the easiest man to love. Let's just get that straight. Uh, here's a couple things she's always told me, because I remember she had forgave me for being a bonehead one day, and, and then she forgave me quick. I was like, you can't forgive me. She goes, I, I have to. That's why. She goes, I have to for me. My relationship with the Lord. Because if I don't forgive you, I'm going to get so hard hearted towards you. I'm like, oh, wow. So ultimately, it's a relationship with the Lord. The second thing you've always said that is, that's enabled you to do things that I would say aren't common to most wives, um, both dealing with extreme versions of me and then doing extreme ministry work, uh, I mean, how many how many wives have a safe house in Iraq where we're taking our ISIS children in, or kids who've been parents have been killed doing the fighting, you know? And you have to do movements in armored vehicles and have, you know, your preparation plan to escape if we're hit and blah 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 blah. So in that sense, you're you're pretty unique, babe. But one thing you've always said that I just I'm always I'm like, wow, is you go, I know heaven is sin. So I keep one eye on heaven, one eye here on the earth. Yeah, I mean, would you say that's right? Yeah. Would you put the cigarette out? There's no, this is no smoking studio. She's doing like this. She doesn't smoke, but that's fun. That's funny, I don't care who you are. Um... So thank you for having such a strong walk with the Lord. Another thing she does, well, one, she chases me around the house. She's always trying to get next to me. I'm like, hey, let's knock it down to three or four or five times a week. Hey, I, I'm an older man. No, uh, I would say this. Well, we, we do have a very healthy intimacy relationship. Well, that is good glue. Um, um, and that does matter. So women, I'll say this in front of my wife. Don't set your husband up for porn by withholding intimacy from him. That's something you're supposed to just enjoy, have a blast, grow with. I mean, woo, be romantic. I, and vice versa, because there are sometimes it's the men who withhold. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes men withhold. Or they don't have a libido because... No libido. All that stuff. No libido. So... We'll just touch on that. Uh, I think the best thing I've done, I did it when I was in my 40s, is uh, had my testosterone level checked because I used to work out like a maniac and train, and, and, and yet the older I get, my activity increased missions and overseas. And I was like, oh, what a now scout comes in. All right, guess he's barged in. Uh, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Don't forget your puppies. So, uh, testosterone, um, I had my testosterone checked and man, it was so low. I'm surprised I wasn't wearing a dress and heels. Uh, I had depleted, uh, because the older you get, there is a decrease in production of testosterone for men. And it, you need to get it back men either virtu by virtue of, uh, uh, exercise, natural supplements, whatever, or, uh, I personally recommend an organization called Low T Center. And I've been with them for about a decade. Uh, and literally, man, what did that do for me? I was working out so hard. A guy I was working out with was uh, 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 Malibu on the TV show Gladiator. We were friends. Uh, and He was training me. Man, I was pushing out iron, drinking protein. I just, I had drop weight. I couldn't put, I couldn't keep weight on. Man, I got my test level up. And I had literally got back in the groove that, um, I mean, it's just a small amount of testosterone, but what it does for your body allows you, it's a fair playing field. And man, oh man, I went from 185, 180, 185 to, I hover now at 210 and, uh, on good days, about 12% body fat and I'm 6'2". So that works for me. 
and uh, that has helped my mind, decision making. Um, uh, I, I never had issues with libido per se, but um, it's just good all the way around. And women, the same thing. Some of you women may need a little touch of testosterone. Get your hormones checked. Because um, we feel like we need to offer our temples to the Lord for maximum benefit to excel the best that we can in what we do to serve Him. So we're healthy, we're organic, we eat well, we exercise. Uh, you know, one day she'll get back on the European arm wrestling circuit. <sighs> Make some money. That's a joke. Uh, so anyway, what else, babe? What else? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. I talked about forgiveness for sure. And you guys, I know when we do stuff like that, this and I'm rambling, you come and go. You pop in. Uh, come back. You can watch this. You can share it with other people. Um, we love y'all. Don't, you know, th this is just this is me talking it up but forgiveness forgiveness is to us the best definition we've heard is giving up your right to hurt someone back for hurting you and uh man yeah do you want to get even absolutely but uh is it needed not always do i believe in justice absolutely ask isis they've been recipients of that i'm and and other people who have done horrible evil things uh, justice was served and it was right and it was good in the eyes of the Lord uh, but with your spouse learn to forgive and learn to talk through stuff you, you know because I come from such a, a very challenged crazy background I would tell her hey what you're doing right now what you're saying makes me feel crazy I'm still owning it but I'm saying what you're doing and saying it makes me feel crazy in my mind literally crazy and she had to learn there were some things that triggered me and uh, didn't make sense to a lot of other people, but the connectors to it and the things I struggled with made a lot of sense. Uh, and she learned to stay away from those or reassure me. Yeah, I, you know, forgive me. I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to, you know. And that's why in the beginning of this, honey, I talked about we're, we're only married to each other. Nobody else and nothing else and if there's something that's offensive to one of us that we're doing or whatever we've learned just to cut it out because it's not worth it i want to stay married to you and um even if i was muslim i would only stay married to you salam alaikum I would also say forgiveness when we realize that we're forgiven everything we do and ever will do it's easier to forgive when we understand how much we're forgiven I don't even understand what you just said right there I almost shut the door well, say it louder and tell me again but it's, it's what I tell you it's, what? I have to forgive Jesus forgives me why wouldn't I forgive you? oh yeah I, I mentioned that earlier because that is one of the things that you absolutely um, do say. Hmm. So, do you? How do you encourage yourself spiritually to be on this journey of merge with me? I know that our marriage is bigger than us. It's bigger than ourselves. our marriage is bigger than us. Hear me now, people. Our marriage is bigger than us. What a beautiful thing to know that your marriage is bigger than you. I mean, God wants to show off to it. He wants to, if you have kids, he wants to raise children in a godly home and shoot them out like arrows for the next generation. And so it is bigger than us. The other thing I would say is you have a very big serving heart. Um, you, you, you actually bring your coffee every morning which is great, but the key thing is after that she goes and she does her devotion. Either snuggles up next to me in bed or she'll come out to her little devotion area and she'll open a Bible, she'll read, 
She'll pull out her journal or book and write what God's speaking to her, what she's learning, or questions that she has. That, and that's, that's beautiful. I have a different tempo. I don't necessarily do that in the mornings like that. Mine tends to be more at night. And then I pray. I like praying when everybody's sleeping. So, um, anyway. All right, well, that's that's kind of it, you guys. Let me see how I've been going here. Uh, I'm not sure. All right, well, let me look. Tell us how you met Eileen. Okay. Well, we know your story, but maybe uh, you can jump on live together and share your love story sometime. Well, we did meet at church. She was not a believer. I was a new believer. And I was very zealous for the things of the Lord. Um, it was uh, Calvary Chapel, Marietta. No, no, Vista. Vista. And uh, O'Brien Broderson, wherever you are, he was, our, uh, he was a very young pastor. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and God, God still used him. So uh, we met there. And it was just her listening to the Bible being taught, uh, good, solid, expository teaching, which Brian is a very good Bible teacher. Uh, it really started, it just moved her to a place of, uh, you know, conviction of sin and a complete surrender of the Lord. And we were friends. I wanted to be more than friends because literally the first time that I saw her come in, when she was walking down the church, the, oak, I, I, the first thing I said to myself in the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll marry that one because I, I really wanted to get married. Uh, I was a single man. and uh, But she was she so far outclassed me. So, but what's very encouraging is the Lord, he really shared to my heart. He said, she'll love you because of your love for me. And that's been my secret, secret weapon. Uh, so uh, it really was my love for the Lord that drew her into a great friendship. And, uh, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful, thankful, thankful for that. So that's how we met. And uh, it took about a year before you got sweet on me, a little over a year, uh, which it was good. I didn't like it. But it was good, you know. She had to make sure there were no other, there was no other boyfriend that was the guy. She had to make sure her relationship with the Lord was strong, and that when it was time to be committed, to me she's very committed and has always been. I've always thanked her for that because uh, she could, she easily could have justified leaving me about a gazillion times, uh, and if she would have listened to other people, well. That that would uh, she would have done that, but she didn't. Um, okay, um, well, I think that's going to be it for now. Hey, all right, we got Clive listening from England, the UK. God bless you. Um, uh, Is it Clive lives in our room? No, no. This week, Saturday, uh, two of our puppies will be. Uh, we're actually going to put two of them for sale. And there's a process. It's not as easy as it sounds. I mean, you got to be either a solid family that uh, wants and needs a family uh, protection um, member because they're they're incredible pets, uh, but they're security dogs or specialized unit. Um, and we're going to actually open the bidding this coming Saturday, uh, and we'll take bidding uh, for a little while. I will give you more information, but uh, that's to get one of Scout's pups. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, she has four. And one's already spoken for, and then we're keeping one. So, all right. Well, that is it, I think. God bless you guys. Uh, have a great uh, Sunday and a great week coming. Hey, again, if you haven't signed up for our uh, daily intelligence brief that we email out, you should. Just go to victormarks.com. And I think it's slash brief or something. Um, but sign up for it and you'll start getting it uh, every morning. That's so you can know the difference between rumors and fact. And news cycles and fact. 
And if there's an opinion given, it's based on fact with no bias for anything else. So, all right, you guys. I think that is it. And uh, let me get this right here and show you that that's how I see your and your questions and comments. All right. <laughs> All right, God bless you guys. Watch, I'm going to do this. I'm going to wave us out. Bye-bye.